Good evening, Rachel. Good evening, Ed. Thank you. And you thanks bet. to you at home for staying with us for the next hour on what has turned out to be a surprising and historic day. This is one of those rare days where the daily schedule put out by the White House about the whereabouts of the President of the United States turned out to be a deliberate fabrication because for security reasons, the president today made an overseas trip under the veil of secrecy. It is always dramatic when this happens, but it is, of course, not unprecedented. Uh, in modern times, in fact, this is essentially standard operating procedure now for presidents visiting America's various war zones. Shortly after the 2008 election, uh, in which Barack Obama was, of course, elected president, so after the election, but before the new president had been sworn in, in December of 2008, then still president George W. Bush took one of these surprise trips, uh, unannounced trips, to Baghdad. It was December 14th, 2008, and that's when this happened. Yes. Okay, everybody calm down for a minute. First of all, thank you for apologizing on behalf of the Iraqi people. It doesn't bother me. And if you want some, if you want the facts, it's a size 10 shoe that he threw. <laughs> Boy, if you were not surprised enough to find out that the president had, surprise, gone to Iraq unexpectedly, the president having a shoe hurled at him once he was in Iraq was definitely a surprise that day. Uh, when, when you look at the official transcript from this, we actually posted a link to it um, on our blog tonight so you can see it. When you go through the transcript of this event, when you get to the part where the guy throws the shoe at President Bush, it's described in the transcript as, quote, audience interruption. <laughs> Understatement much? Uh, what President Bush was in Baghdad to do that day was to sign the Status of Forces Agreement between the United States and Iraqi governments, which essentially committed the United States to end our war in Iraq. It was an agreement that President Obama then followed through on. The last U.S. troops, of course, left Iraq in December. Well, today in Afghanistan, it was not a Status of Forces Agreement. It was called instead a strategic partnership agreement between the U.S. and the Afghan governments. But essentially, the idea is the same. It is to commit both of our countries to a plan by which the United States will end our war there. Today I signed a historic agreement between the United States and Afghanistan that defines a new kind of relationship between our countries. A future in which Afghans are responsible for the security of their nation and we build an equal partnership between two sovereign states. A future in which war ends and a new chapter begins. As we move forward, some people will ask why we need a firm timeline. The answer is clear. Our goal is not to build a country in America's image or to eradicate every vestige of the Taliban. These objectives would require many more years, many more dollars, and most importantly, many more American lives. Our goal is to destroy al-Qaeda, and we are on a path to do exactly that. Afghans want to assert their sovereignty and build a lasting peace. That requires a clear timeline to wind down the war. The agreement we signed today sends a clear message to the Afghan people. As you stand up, you will not stand alone. Within this framework, we'll work with the Afghans to determine what support they need to accomplish two narrow security missions beyond 2014, counterterrorism and continued training. But we will not build permanent bases in this country, nor will we be patrolling its cities and mountains. That will be the job of the Afghan people. I recognize that many Americans are tired of war. As president, nothing is more wrenching than signing a letter to a family of the fallen. We're looking into the eyes of a child who will grow up without a mother or father. I will not keep Americans in harm's way a single day longer than is absolutely required for our national security. But we must finish the job we started in Afghanistan and end this war responsibly. 
It was President Obama speaking tonight live from Afghanistan about the strategic partnership agreement he just signed with Afghan President Hamid Karzai to essentially spell out how America's longest war, our war in Afghanistan, ends. Now, unlike the end of the Iraq War Agreement that President Bush signed on shoe-throwing Sunday back in 2008, uh, the Afghanistan Agreement promises continuing American involvement in Afghanistan for another 10 years after the troops leave. That means training, that means some unspecified support, it means money. It is not supposed to mean American war fighting, but still. Afghanistan has pretty much been in a continuous state of warfare for more than 30 years now. And if we are promising to stay involved through 2024, through 2024, frankly, that means there is a six-year-old alive somewhere in America today for whom this speech and this agreement today means that they will be spending the summer of 2024 in Kandahar. Contrast that with Iraq, where we've got an embassy now, but other than that, pretty much bupkis. The president's secret trip to Afghanistan today, though, was not just to sign this agreement about the end of the war. The White House acknowledges that the president could have just as easily signed the agreement in Washington. There was no technical need to be there in person. But the other reason for the president to make this trip to Afghanistan today is clearly because of today's date. We can report the president will announce that Osama bin Laden is in fact dead, that Osama bin Laden is dead. That is the major development tonight, uh, something the United States has sought to accomplish since the deadly attacks on 9-11. I want to take a moment and show you this picture. We showed it briefly, but I want to go back here. Uh, this is across the street from the White House in Washington. today. It is not an accident that the president is marking the anniversary of the death of Osama bin Laden by being in Afghanistan. The 9-11 attacks on the United States were planned and directed and carried out by the Al-Qaeda organization that was headquartered in Afghanistan, that trained its membership in Afghanistan, that was given sanctuary by the Afghan government, and that was led by Osama bin Laden. And that is why within three and a half weeks of the 9-11 attacks, U.S. forces were on the ground in Afghanistan. By five weeks after that, the Taliban was gone from the Afghan capital of Kabul. And four weeks after that, a military operation in Tora Bora, in the mountains between Afghanistan Afghanistan and Pakistan was thought to have a chance of killing this man, killing Osama bin Laden. But bin Laden was allowed to escape from Tora Bora into Pakistan, into the wind, to escape also any real sense that the United States had a continuing bullseye on him. I, I don't know where he is, nor do I, you know, I just don't spend that much time on him, Kelly, to be honest with you. I truly am not that concerned about him. After losing bin Laden at Tora Bora, the Bush administration never again got a beat on him. George W. Bush's former CIA director, Michael Hayden, told Time magazine this week, quote, I can only speak with authority through February 15th, 2009. But at that point, when people would ask, when's the last time you really knew where he was? My answer was Tora Bora in 2001. A little over a year after losing him at Tora Bora, the Bush administration had moved on in a big way. They had already started a whole new unrelated war in Iraq. The defining and radical assertion of the George W. Bush era was A, that the United States would now start preemptive, unprovoked wars, and B, we would fight terrorism, not just by fighting terrorists, not just by fighting terrorist groups, but by fighting the whole world, remaking the world in America's image. You're either with us or against us. We will topple unfriendly governments. We will stand up new governments. We will stand up whole new kinds of government that have never before existed in areas where we are trying to install it. We will wage global war. They called it a global war on terror, a global war justified by 9-11. But as for the people who attacked us on 9-11, so I, I don't know where he is, nor do I, you know, I just don't spend that much time on him, Kelly, to be honest with you. I when it came time for a new president after George W. Bush, the Democratic critique of that era's neoconservative adventures, specifically the Barack Obama Democratic critique of that era's neoconservative adventures, um, was that actually Osama bin Laden is important. The idea of a global war to remake the world in our image 
is folly. And what we ought to wage instead is a war against those who attacked us on 9-11. Al-Qaeda specifically should be the target. Its leader, Osama bin Laden, really should be a priority for the United States. The president should spend some time thinking about Osama bin Laden. That was the sharp break proposed by the new president after George W. Bush. And honestly, to the chagrin of many people who had been alarmed by the expansion of executive power in the George W. Bush administration, the Obama administration has not represented a significant break from that. The Obama administration radically, for example, expanded the use of assassin assassination by drone. The number of drone strikes in Pakistan spiked in 2009 once President Obama took over from President Bush. And then in 2010, those already spiked numbers from 2009 doubled. This was not going to be a more pacifist approach under President Obama. President Obama, for another example, tripled the number of troops in Afghanistan. The Obama administration has not thrown less American weight around and has not thrown it away in a less unilateral way in terms of executive authority. The Obama administration has just thrown American weight around in a much more specific direction. It was not a difference in aggression. It was a difference in focus. And so for this president in particular, it makes sense that on the anniversary of Osama bin Laden's death, he would put himself in Afghanistan. He would explicitly, with this trip there today, tie the end of the war in Afghanistan to the killing of the head of al-Qaeda. And because the news gods are numerologists, uh, it is, of course, also perfect for us understanding the sharp and specific turn we have taken as a country on national security under this new president. It, it is just as much key to understanding that. Uh, that today's announcement about the end of the Afghanistan war is not just on the anniversary of Osama bin Laden's death. This announcement today about the end of the Afghanistan war is also on the anniversary of this. This is an NBC News special report, a presidential address. Here is Tom Brokaw. Good evening. Tonight, President Bush speaks to the nation from the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln, which has been at sea for almost 10 months, much of that time in the Persian Gulf. A victorious commander in chief thanking all men and women in uniform for a mission accomplished. That was nine years ago today. The previous president put on a flight suit, pretended to fly a jet onto the deck of an aircraft carrier that was parked off the coast of San Diego and standing under a banner that read mission accomplished. He declared that in the battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. That was less than three months into what turned out to be an eight and a half year long war. What President George W. Bush was celebrating on that aircraft carrier nine years ago today was that we had successfully invaded Iraq. We had successfully started a second simultaneous land war alongside the one he was still muddling through in Afghanistan while he didn't pay very much attention to Osama bin Laden. And now with another presidential election campaign underway. The new president, President Obama, is celebrating in his own way, having decapitated al-Qaeda and having signed the framework for the second of George W. Bush's wars that he is ending. And presumably he's also celebrating his good fortune of running against a Republican opponent this year who chose as his spokesperson on these issues on today of all days, this guy, Dan Senor. There he is in Iraq before there he is here on TV today. The face of public relations for George W. Bush's invasion of Iraq. Now the face of national security public relations for the Mitt Romney for President campaign.